welcome to the captain's welcome aboard reception. Well, ladies and gentlemen, right now it is my utmost pleasure to introduce to you the master of the Star Princess. You've got to bring him on with a huge round of applause from the United Kingdom. Please welcome Captain Ed Perrin. Well, thank you, Richard. Well, you really have picked a quite a spectacular cruise. This really is quite something special. Of course, the ultimate uh, goal I know for everybody is to head down to the Antarctic Peninsula. It really is quite a voyage of discovery heading down there. And I do hope that you find that it, uh, that you feel like a, an original explorer. I don't know if you know any of the rules about navigation in Antarctica, but uh, there's lots of uh, treaties set up to make sure that it remains very unspoiled, a totally natural place. And of course, as such, I do hope that you can enjoy it in its full beauty. It really will be spectacular. We've just got to cross our fingers and hope for some, some really good weather as we go down. Incidentally, at the moment, looking ahead, it does look as though we're, we're going to be lucky and have a good time. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second officer speaking to you from the Navigational Bridge. I'm very excited to have the pleasure of heading down to the beautiful Antarctic with all of you. I was actually one of the officers on the bridge who was here when we made our last visit down to this part of the world. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, you're in store for some very magnificent sights indeed. Just to let you know that we have just crossed the Antarctic Convergence Zone and we have posted extra lookouts as a precaution in order to keep a sharp lookout for ice and other vessels. Since our departure from Stanley, we have steamed 293 nautical miles with an average speed of 17 knots. We have a further 283 nautical miles to steam to Elephant Island. Our present position is latitude 56 degrees 22 minutes south, longitude 056 13 decimal 1 minutes west, which is 340 nautical miles off the coast of Argentina and we are presently following a southerly course towards Elephant Island. And enjoy a pleasant day on board the beautiful Star Princess. Beautiful morning, about 4 Celsius, 41 Fahrenheit, which is quite warm from the Antarctica, as we are approaching Elephant Island. Good morning everyone, uh, this is Chris speaking, your resident Antarctic naturalist. As we uh, approach Elephant Island, we can see the, the steep cliffs and the, the jagged mountains that make up much of the island and the island group. We're coming to Elephant Island from the north. In terms of Elephant Island's location, and where we are at the moment. Elephant Island is located at 61 degrees south and 54 degrees 50 more, 54 minutes west. It's part of the, a small group of islands that lie at the far northeastern end of the South Shetland Islands that lie off the northwestern flank of the Antarctic Peninsula and around 550 miles southeast of Cape Horn isn't exactly a homely place as you can see. The problem with Elephant Island is its lack of habitable space. And this is largely the reason why there are no science bases or research stations currently on the islands. There's hardly any flat land around the coast. Elephant Island's mostly bordered by these steep cliffs that rise straight out of the sea. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the captain. What's a first glimpse of the continent of Antarctica. So we've been steaming up and down to the north of Elephant Island. I do hope you've enjoyed the views of those glaciers and uh, Point Wild. Well, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to wind her up in speed a little bit, pass through Prince Charles Strait, and then head on down to Endurance Glacier. It's about uh, just under 30 miles to go around to there. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Hope you're enjoying the great weather and great scenery we've got outside. So, the ship is just coming up alongside the Endurance Glacier. This is the very large distinctive glacier that comes down off 
the interior of Elephant Island. It's named after the Royal Navy survey and research vessel, the HMS Endurance, which was in turn named after Ernest Shackleton's ship, the Endurance. The sun is out pretty strong. The ozone layer here is less than in the farther north. Protect yourself. The sea around the edge of the glacier, you notice the discoloration in the water caused by the meltwater of the glacier. You can also see a few hundred meters off the carving front of the glacier a line of a brash ice. This is ice that's carved off the front of the glacier. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Captain again. Well, that uh, beautiful sight was Endurance Glacier. We're now just beginning to slowly pick up speed and we're going to head down to Gibbs Island. That's the island that's uh, fine on the starboard bow. And then we're going to uh, circumnavigate around Gibbs Island before heading on out to sea down to towards the uh, Brantfield Strait. Do hope you've enjoyed the wonderful sunshine. And on the port side right now is a wonderful sight of uh, glacier actually going down to the sea. It's really quite a spectacular sight. We're going to be going around Gibbs Island and continuing our journey through the Antarctica. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain. Well, here we go, we're westbound on the uh, northern side of Gibb Island. Just coming to the, to the end of the island. What I intend doing is turning to the south and then heading east along the southern side. Unfortunately, we can't go nearly as close on the southern, southern side because uh, there's a much more shallow water around there. So as we pass now, we're just seven tenths of a mile from the uh, North Shore. Out on the port side right now, wonderful view. just in the entrance to Hope Bay. That's on the starboard bow, right-hand side of the ship, at about uh, 30 or 40 degrees from the bow. You can see a collection of little red huts. And there's also a ship there, there's a supply ship. Just uh, slowly moving in. It's a bit of a shame, I think uh, we're gonna have to keep a little distance from him and uh, possibly not be able to go quite so far into Hope Bay as I'd anticipated because they have asked that we keep clear. That said, we'll get as far as we possibly can and certainly give you a good view. You'll be pleased to hear that Joe May is wide awake and he's ready to tell you all about it. This is Joe, your port lecture from the bridge. I know many of you are already out and about. It's only seven o'clock in the morning of a beautiful morning 
as Captain said, we are approaching Hope Bay. Esperanza in Spanish means hope. That's the name of the research station, the Argentinian research station, which will be up on the starboard side. You will see some of the brownish or reddish containers. Yes, they are containers, and those containers were turned in to residences, to research laboratories. That's what it is. And of course, Christian Gunn, our naturalist, is on the way to the bridge. And he will tell you a lot of details about the area here. Okay, towering up behind Esperanza Station is the peak of Mount Flora. And Flora was not named for its abundant vegetation and flowers, but named by Northern Skilled Party, named by the Antarctic explorers in the early 20th century for fossil flowers that they found in the rocks around this area. So that's Mount Flora just behind Esperanza Station, named after the fossil flowers. You can see how quickly the weather changes in the Antarctic. There's low cloud, very dark cloud, lots of snow out there. Um, whereas in the other direction as we look down the Antarctic Sound, we can see the blue skies and the sun. And it's just an indication of how quickly the, the weather changes in this part of the world. We a look around Antarctic Sound. And if you're out on deck, you can see why Antarctic Sound is nicknamed Iceberg Alley. In the distance, and all around us, you can see lumps of floating ice, varying in size from very large tabular bergs, which I can see straight off the bow at about 12 o'clock, to the smaller bergy bits, which are about the size of a house, to the even smaller bergs, which are called growlers, and then right down to the small lumps of floating ice called brush and brush ice. Most of these bergs are dripping up from the level sea. We already did pass several icebergs, some big ones, some small ones, and of course, as Captain said, within the safety of the ship, we will maintain distance from those big icebergs. Coming back up into Antarctic Sound, not named after the Antarctic continent, but named after Otto Nordenskjold's ship from the 1901 expedition to the peninsula. So, to on the left or the port side will be the Antarctic continent, the very edge of the continent itself stretching all the way down to the South Pole and around the Southern Hemisphere. And to the right hand side, as we look forward, on the south side, will be some of the islands that surround the Antarctic continent. We have Dundee Island, Joinville Island and Derville Island. There are large islands that form the outside of Antarctic Sound. Once we leave Antarctic Sound, we'll enter the Brantford Strait, which is the large stretch of water that separates the South Shetland Islands from the Antarctic continent and the peninsula. The Brantford Strait was named after Edward Brantford, a Royal Navy hydrographer. Who came uh, down here with William Smith in 1819 and helped Charles and Matt the South Shetland Islands.
we're inside the Bransfield Strait, so we've got 47 miles to run from here up to Admiralty Bay. We're a little bit behind schedule, that uh, fog coming out of uh, the Esperanza station did set us back a little bit. Obviously, uh, we had to go very, very slowly as we went between those icebergs, particularly on a transit where we weren't able to see them. So we're about three quarters of an hour or so behind schedule at the moment. So all being well, we should be up there and are making our approach into Admiralty Bay at about 2.45 this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Again, this is the captain. And we're now heading our way into Admiralty Bay. The ship on the port side we're just passing now is the General Artigas. And Joe, our esteemed lecturer, will be telling you all about that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the ship General Artigas, it's a Uruguayan ship. The Uruguayan flag is there. Are we going beyond the ship? We're going much closer to the Artovsky Research Station. Now this is the uh, Polish Antarctic Survey Station. A couple of the scientists are going to come on board. But equally good news is that seven of the scientists will be traveling with us from uh, Antarctica going back up to Ushuaia. So while they're on board, hopefully we'll have the opportunity to share some of their secrets and find out what it's like living down here. Well, everywhere we've been so far, the sun has been shining. There's a little bit of bright up there, so if you can all think uh, really positive thoughts, see if we can clear away some of the gloom. When we're going to stop and uh, hold the ship. We'll be there quite some time, so do enjoy views. It's really scenic when we get inside. And, of course, the... Uh, Polish scientists will be coming out in their little rubber zodiac. So do enjoy the afternoon in Admiralty Bay. Good afternoon everyone, this is Chris speaking from the bridge. So we've crossed the Bransfield Strait from Antarctic Sound and Antarctic Peninsula and left Iceberg Alley and all the icebergs behind us and made our way across the strait to the South Shetland Islands. The South Shetlands were originally charted and discovered in 1819 by a captain named William Smith who was blown off course from Cape Horn and arrived at this chain of islands. He immediately claimed the islands for the Admiralty and King George, when he finally got to Valparaiso, the British Admiralty assigned a young Royal Naval hydrographer, Edward Bransfield, to accompany him and return to the islands and make a full survey of them. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome our new passengers that will stay with us all the way to Ushuaia. Small 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain. It uh, now gives me great pleasure to introduce you to one of the scientists from the Polish station here. And I'm sure he can say his name much better than myself. But my attempt is Pietr. <laughs> I would like to say hello to everybody from Polish Antarctic station Arstowski. I would like to say a few words about our station and about place we are in this moment. So we are in Admiralty Bay, which is big fjord, as you can see, surrounded by glaciers. And from 30 years, over 30 years, it's a place of Polish Antarctic Station. By the way, we will have uh, our birthday party next uh, uh, weekend, next week, at uh, Thursday. It will be 33rd anniversary of our station. We are preparing for having many guests and enjoying our party. Uh, what is the research uh, we are doing on, on our station? This station is uh, Polish uh, Academy of Science station, Department of Antarctic Biology. So uh, most programs are focused on biology. I would like to thank you very much for, uh, for your help, for your hospitality for our uh, people. You will have uh, our seven scientists they are very great specialists. They are some geologists. They are biologists. So you will have also opportunity to have some information from first hand from them. And for us, it's a big pleasure to be here and to say a few words uh, from, from the bridge. Thank you very much for everything. Uh, and have a great trip in Antarctica. Enjoy it. Well, this is Joe, your port lecture. We want to thank uh, Pietro very much, and uh, all I know how to say in Polish is thank you. Dziękuję. And now back to our captain, Edward Perry. Well, we thank you very much, and uh, it's a great pleasure to have you on board, and your co colleagues traveling with us, and uh, do hope they're going to have a fair ride, enjoy the uh, passenger facilities, which I'm sure they're probably looking forward to, and uh, we wish you all the very best with your, your missions down here. Thank you for coming. Well, we crossed the Bransfield Strait through the night from the South Shetlands, moved away from the uh, from Admiralty Bay and King George Island, came down the South Shetlands and went across the Bransfield Strait back towards the Antarctic continent. We're just entering the Gerlash Strait which is a stretch of water between the Antarctic continent which is on the left hand side, the port side and that's an area of the continent known as Graham Land, British Graham Land named after an expedition in the 1930s and on the starboard side on the right hand side as you're looking forward is the islands of the Palma Archipelago. Well the visibility outside isn't particularly good at the moment, it's quite overcast, but at the moment we're passing an enormous iceberg. There's bergs of various sizes out there in the Gerlash Strait um, from small bits of brash ice to the larger growlers, which are about the size of a car, to <coughs> to the much larger bergy bits, which are about the size of a house, and then the great big tabular bergs, with the flat tops, have carved off the ice shelves, and we may get to see the land on either side, you can just make out the ice cliffs on the 
starboard side, the right hand side at the moment. And on the port side, you can just start to make out some of the rocky cliffs and coastline. As the, as the light 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 lifts a bit and the sky rises up, you can just see some of the impressive peaks of the Antarctic continent. We're passing down the Gerda Strait at the moment, which was namely of Andrew de Gerda, a Belgian explorer. conducted an expedition, very famous expedition in this area in around the end of the 19th century. It's part of a group of expeditions to the peninsula in the late 19th. We're just poking our nose down the opening of the Neumeyer Channel, which is the fairly narrow channel between Bianchi Island and Anvers Island. There's a bit of floating ice at the mouth of it at the moment, a few bergy bits and tabular bergs, and we're just trying to move our way past the bergs and have a look at the opening of the Neumeyer Channel. As Christian was saying, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost in the Neumeyer Channel. Some little blue sky is appearing. Let's hope it stays the way it is. It will be a great passage for the 20 miles approximately. Fabulous. The speed is only 7 knots an hour, which is like 10 miles, that's it. Here we go very slowly, so it will be a great passage. We'll be here for a few hours drawing, going through this place. Keep your eyes open on the floating icebergs. You might see seals or penguins on top of the icebergs. As we will be now for hours, a few hours going around the Neumeyer Channel. Icebergs are like DNA, never two are alike. They can look like, but they never two alike. Try to spot some that even look alike here. It's not that easy. <laughs> What do you want to do? Okay. Oh, he's going to go here. So get this part of the back. Get down, get down. There we go. Okay, we're just making a approach into Neumeyer Channel. Now, the Neumeyer Channel is about 20 miles long, about 30 kilometers and about one and a half miles or two and a half, 2.4 kilometers wide. The outside temperature is still five degrees Celsius, about 41 Fahrenheit. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, it won't make any difference if you'll be on port side or starboard side. You will have fabulous view. To talk too much about such a beautiful place that we're going through. Remember I always say a thousand words is less. It's less than one picture. And once you see it, it's more than a thousand pictures. So, going through here, just appreciate as we're entering now the Neumeyer Channel. Take advantage of this beautiful day.
So for those of you on the port side, the left hand side, we'll be passing by the small sailing vessel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, about the flag, seems like it's a Polish flag passing. We are just talking with Christian here and we are lucky it's overcast. Then you see the beautiful bluish color of the glaciers. If it would be nice bright sun, it would be a piece of a white ice. So we are very lucky. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, uh, I've been down here a few times now, and every time I've been here, the weather's been completely different. And the great thing about this part of the peninsula, you really can't go wrong with the weather conditions. Even if it is a little bit overcast, as it is at the moment, I think the, the dark clouds add something to the, the grandeur of the place. I can see the, the low cloud hugging the tops of the mountains, and it really does add something to the, the scale and the, the spectacle of the mountains. I was saying before, this is the start of the Antarctic continent proper. This is the actual landmass of Antarctica. If we were to get onto the landmass, we could travel from here in an unbroken line on the ice cap all the way to the South Pole. We'd have to cross the Transantarctic Mountains, up one of the glaciers, perhaps even the Beardmore Glacier that Scott and Shackleton used. Part of the Shark Air Expedition Discovery. Now it's named Damoy Point after a French politician who backed the expedition. And many features around here are named by Shark and other members of his expedition. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's Captain. I do hope you've had a wonderful morning this morning watching all the ice and the sights to behold in Numaya. Very pleased that the uh, cloud lifted and it really did put on a fantastic show for us as we made our way very slowly down the fields. Well, the plan is at the moment to, uh, we're just going to start increasing speed now. We're now at uh, the south end of uh, Numaya. And we're going to cross back across the Gerla Strait. That's where we were heading down this morning through the, uh, through the night. 
and then we're going to head over to the uh, slightly towards the southwest and we will enter a passage called the Butler Passage. Once we go into the Butler Passage we'll sail south through there for about uh, five miles or so and we'll get to the southernmost limit of where we're able to navigate at which stage we'll stop the ship and uh, turn around have a look down the Le Maire Channel before heading out again. Visibility is pretty good at the moment. You can see all the way to the Antarctic Peninsula, uh, the Humphreys Heights there, and Booth Island, the twin peaks of Booth Island, and the Le Maire Channel stretching southwards. So this is a great view of the Antarctic continent, the peninsula itself. And we're slowly be turning around so everyone gets a good view of it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain. And just to give you a bit of uh, background as to why we've stopped where we have chosen right here and now, we came down the Butler Pass down to look at this wonderful view down to Lemire Strait. And you might uh, indeed wonder why we haven't gone a bit closer down that passage. Well, there's a particularly good reason for that at the moment. We're just less than one mile from the position that the entire ship's certification, the insurance, the crew agreement, so all the contracts for every single crew member on board, would cease to function. So that's the parallel of 65 degrees south. So we just edged down to within about half a mile of that position, just to make sure that... Uh, all our documents remain valid the whole time and so this is as far south as this ship is ever allowed to travel. The latitude of 65 south is actually set as part of the Antarctic Treaty and uh, all the larger ships such as ourselves, ships carrying more than 500 passengers on board are restricted from uh, entering south of 65 degrees south, so that's the ethos behind it. I thought you might find that uh, interesting. We'll turn around and uh, head back out the way we came. I do hope you're enjoying to continue to enjoy the uh, lovely sights and sounds today. <laughs> 